Welcome everyone to the Bitwarden Passkeys in You webcast. Today we're going to be talking about passkeys and then how you can start thinking about implementing them within your own personal infrastructure and incorporating them within your security um, infrastructure as well. Uh, my name is Casey Babcock and I'll be the host for today, but we have a lot of other um, Bitwarden employees and other really cool um, special guests that will be joining today um, as well. And so they'll introduce themselves as they go. Oh, it looks like we've got someone from the Caribbean calling in. Good, I'm glad it's not just people from California anymore as cool as that area is. Um, before we jump in to this webcast, I wanted to thank everyone for joining today because by just being um, a part of today's webcast, you're also part of the passkey future. This is still kind of an expanding ecosystem of different passkey solutions. Well, they're all based on the same protocol. And so um, by asking questions, by getting involved, you're helping shape what we're going to be seeing actually in the market. Um, so really appreciate that um, and jumping in for today's session. Great. So we do have a stacked agenda today. For First, starting off with some instructions about a Bitwarden holiday giveaway. Um, and then we'll be jumping into some passkey questions, um, some reoccurring questions we've seen around passkeys. And then um, clearing up possible confusion around hardware and software bound passkeys um, and which one works best for you. And then um, one of our special guests citing Alliance, so um, they developed the protocol by which all pass keys are built on. Um, we've got Megan from the FIDO Alliance talking about um, passwords and what that means for pass keys. And then we have a live demo, um, a sneak peek, if you will, of a um, upcoming coming in, allowing you to log into your Bitwarden vault with passkeys. Um, so we haven't uh, really shown this to anyone yet. So you're getting a really nice sneak peek of this. And then passkey management. This is something that we introduced um, in our last passkey webcast. And um, we have some new updates to that as well. And then lastly, um, a Q&A. Maybe before we jump into that, I did want to let everyone know that this is a collaborative session. So if you have questions, feel free to put that in the chat or in the questions pane. We'll make sure to try and answer those as we go through. Um, we also have a dedicated Q&A at the end as well. So Bitwarden holiday giveaway, what everyone was excited about, right? Um, so at the Q&A at the end of today's session, if you have a burning question or a burning comment that you have um, that you would like to ask live, we can get you promoted up to the screen. And anyone who asks a live question will um, be reached out to afterwards with a Bitwarden holiday gift. So we'll reach out to your email that you use to register for Crowdcast. So just be aware of that if you happen to ask a live question. Cool. With that, I'll hand it off to Vivian for passkeys in you um, and what that means for your own security infrastructure. Great. Thanks, Casey. Hey, everyone. I'm Vivian Schick. I work with Casey and Andreas and Micah here at Bitwarden. Um, and just to kind of kick things off here, uh, 2023 was a banner year for passkeys. So we had um, all the big players like Google, Microsoft, Apple, all of them reaffirming um, and rolling out some pretty milestone uh, support offerings for pass keys um, within the operating system, within browsers. Um, and I think I, I came across a recent stat. I think it was from the FIDO Alliance that said that 7 billion user accounts are ready for passwordless sign-in. So definitely 2023 was a great year for pass keys. Um, I thought we could just kind of warm things up a little bit with some common questions. And that's why the event is called Pass Keys and You, because ultimately people want to know, people like myself, want to know how, how are pass keys going to impact my personal security, um, the way that I log into websites, the accounts that I use. And so I, I we, we pulled up a couple of a few questions here that came out from our last pass key event, as well as just across our Bitwarden community. Our, our community is very vocal. They're very security centric. And so I thought we could just have like a 
you know, a casual conversation among the team. And if anyone's in the audience and they, you guys have um, answers or any feedback, opinions on this, please chime in through the Slack. Casey can pull you on stage. Or if you just want to converse through the Slack, the, sorry, the, the chat message system, that's fine as well. We're not on Slack. So the first question that um, came up last time that I thought was a really good question was, will passkeys work if a website changes its domain? Um, and I should preface these questions uh, a little bit that, you know, the, the, the way passkeys interact and the way they work really depends a lot on uh, the operating system that you're using, the browser that you're using, the device that you're using. So um, some of our answers and discussions is, is with a broader, broader sense in mind. So I just wanted to preface that. So the first question again is, will passkeys work if a website changes its domain? Um, and Andreas, Micah, Casey, in, or even um, anyone in the in the audience, if you guys um, want to want to chime in here, um, that'd be great. I'll I'll kick things off here. I think again, it depends, but by default, um, passkeys are bound to a single domain at this at this point. Um, I'm not sure if you can move these pass keys uh, to work on different domains, but I, I do believe that in future specs, future specifications, that there are plans to um, handle multiple domains. And you can, uh, if you're changing domains for, for companies that use different domains, et cetera. So um, I think that's, that's my understanding of it. So I don't know if others have opinions or insights to add to this question. I can add a quick yeah, note that, so it is, um, you're correct that that's sort of how it works at the moment. I'm not entirely sure about exactly what the FIDO Alliance is doing, but I do know there is a, a proposal for uh, allowing these passkeys to be used across sites and across related uh, pages, um, which I think hopefully is also going to be to enable these passkeys to sort of move between domains in a much better way than they are today. Thanks, Andreas. Um, yeah, and Casey, can you can you uh, monitor chat and call anything out um, if people have other things to add? So another question is, can you log in with multiple passkeys? And I. Uh, my understanding is yes. If you if you do have multiple cast pass keys, they can be used to log into the same account um, or stored in different authenticators. Again, um, others others on screen. If you have other other opinions or insights to this, please please chime in. I know Meg. I know I Megan like just joined as well. I was. Question, if I could. Yeah, go oh, on. Megan. Go for it. So the, 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 the tying of a passkey to a domain is for everybody's benefit. That's why that's what makes passkeys phishing resistant, that you cannot give a passkey to a spoofed or phishing site. However, I do understand that sometimes sites like Amazon, for example, have multiple domains within their group of domains. So Amazon.ca, Amazon.com. And I think really the question is, how can we work the specs so that you can leverage a single pass key for multiple domains within uh, an ecosystem, you know, a, a single ecosystem. So not sharing a domain, not, not being able to move pass keys and use them in multiple domains for different service providers. Cause that is, that's off the table and, and that's to everybody's benefit. Cause that's what makes pass keys phishing resistant. Yeah. Thanks Megan. Of course. And then we had other questions too. So do I do I need to create a passkey for each device? Um, and again, I think I think it depends. So correct me if I'm wrong. I think with, for example, with Google, they will ask you to save a unique passkey for each Chrome browser, and through that you'll you'll kind of be proliferating passkeys. Um, with Bitwarden, with a credential manager like Bitwarden, we could sync these passkeys across devices so it's available to you um, anywhere you use Bitwarden. Um, so I don't know if others here have have other thoughts on this? I guess it sort of depends on how you want to use passkeys. Um, if, if, if you want this sort of ease of use that comes with syncable passkeys, then uh, 
Sure, then sa saving it in Bitwarden is a great way of gaining that extra security while also just having to use one passkey. But like, if you want to use the super secure, uh, having like hardware security keys or registering one passkey for each device that you actually that you use and not have them being synced, that's also yeah. a possibility, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, the last two questions are probably the the most uh, the most asked question. Um, throughout the community and and among users, uh, is is what if I lose my device and what if um, you know what if my pass keys become compromised? And so um, again, I I do think this. So in terms of if you lose your device, it does it does depend on different factors for depending on you know which device you're using or really if you're using a hardware or software bound pass key. And so this. The, the hardware software bound passkey topic is is a big one. So we're going to be diving into that a little bit later. Um, but for for those who use multiple devices to log into account, um, I believe the key will live on there. And if you're if you lose a device that was only storing the passkey, or if you lose all your devices, you can still log in using your password um, in, in the way that you've always have. So if you have the recovery codes for the account, you can um, regain access through, through those recovery codes. If your passkeys are stored in your Bitwarden vault, they are always securely backed up and synced between your devices. So. I was Sounds just going to say, if I may, Vivian, that um, that's ex that's precisely the reason why we introduced um, pass keys that are able to be synced and available across devices to solve for that account recovery issue if you were to lose a device. Um, because to your point, you know, if you lose a device and then you go back to an account on another device and you sign in with a password, that's not getting us the security and the usability that we're looking for, nor is it getting us closer to being passwordless. So. The, the syncability or the availability of pass keys across devices is is really to help to ensure that you always have access even if you lose a device. So that's yeah. one of the benefits of, of having them be synced and stored in a vault like Bitwarden. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the last question I think could be rephrased a little bit to say, are pass keys secure, right? And, and the short answer is yes, it is one of the most secure methods available because it is based on that public private key exchange where your private keys are are never shared with third parties um, so there's none of that shared secret vulnerability existing and even if your device storing pass keys was lost or stolen um it it, it would take a lot for a criminal to you know have to be able to break in and it would be essentially almost impossible. Um, Bitwarden works with a white hat hacker, Rachel Toback, and she told our team, um, I think during one of the uh, Authenticate conferences this past year, she said that when, when her team of hackers are faced with pass keys, um, they, they give up. Um, they will only proceed if they see a password with a 2FA screen. Um, then they will continue to try to hack into that account. But if they see a passkey, they're going to give up. It's just it's too much work. And so, um, so the, to to answer the question of are passkeys secure? Yes, absolutely. Um, they we also get a lot of questions because Bitwarden has rolled out passkey management, and Micah on our team is going to um, sh share a little bit about that. But earlier earlier this year, we did roll out passkey management, enabling folks um, to store and secure their passkeys in their Bitwarden vault. Um, and we do get some questions of, well, what if what if my vault gets compromised? What if um, what if it gets breached? How how will my pass keys be protected? Um, and so, Micah, Andreas, I, I, I'm wondering. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm wondering if you can kind of speak to that a little bit for the audience. Well, if your vault gets compromised, you're you're in a pretty sticky situation. Uh, so we'll acknowledge that. Um, I think there are enhancements to the 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 web authn spec things like uh, attestation, which uh, means that if uh, a bad actor did steal the, the private keys from your Bitwarden vault, 
um, they would need to still be using Bitwarden as the authenticator for those to actually be usable, um, provided the the service that registered the, or that requested the passkey required attestation. Um, so there are, there are some things uh, in place, but I think generally speaking, uh, you don't want to be in a position where your Bitwarden vault has been compromised. And so I would encourage uh, securing it with two-factor authentication. Thanks, Micah. I think this is also a really great segue to a question that we got in um, the questions pane about passkey management with Bitwarden, specifically asking when will passkeys work with the Android app? Um, and Mike has already answered this, but I was going to summarize a little bit that it's coming to mobile soon. There's some back end work that needs to be done in terms of supporting that, um, that our team is, is working on. Um, but we're, we're working on making that available within all mobile applications, including Android. Thanks, Casey. Yeah, and I think to, to just to add to what Micah said, yes, if your vault gets breached, it is, it is a very bad situation, but um, that if you are securing your vault with a strong master password to FA, as Micah mentioned, that likelihood, it should be fairly low. Um, and, while pass keys are more secure and phishing resistant than passwords, um, we we shouldn't, uh, I guess, assume that pass keys are meant to replace your entire security. So you know, don't don't leave your computer unlocked. Don't leave your Bitwarden vault unlocked. Use our time vault timeout uh, feature if you're going to be stepping away. So definitely still incorporate uh, different layers of security based on your threat model and based on, you know, which high value accounts you, you want to protect. So, um, so moving, moving on to the next slide, Casey. So this was a big topic um, within our community, uh, the, an issue around pass keys and, you know, the difference between hardware bound and software bound pass keys. Um, and just to kind of provide a little bit of history here, a little bit of background. So pass keys are, basically discoverable FIDO2 credentials. And they've been around for a while. It's, it, the technology is not uh, really net new. Um, but what we're talking about with pass keys and what's being promoted right now around passwordless authentication is really the innovation around how pass keys work. So that the, the key that was living on a hardware key, so for example, YubiKey um, has been supporting pass keys or FIDO2 credentials for, for a few years now, I think since 2018, um, now the, this key can be synchronized and managed by software. So this is kind of the, the fundamental change here is where those pass keys live in a hardware device like a smartphone or a hardware security key like a YubiKey um, or software bound. So, so some of the key differences um, with, with hardware is that the hardware bound pass key is a type of pass key where the private key is generated and stored in a dedicated software, um, oh, sorry, hardware, and it's never exposed to software. And the, the whole process of authentication is also performed by the hardware and you're keeping um, that private key away from attackers. So, um, so it's based on what you have. Uh, the private key is also generated and stored and protected protected in a dedicated hardware device like a YubiKey um, or a Nitro Key. The local device or biometric or PIN for authentication resides on the, um, the hardware key. And ultimately, the attacker needs that physical access. They, they need to get their hands on it. Now, the software bound pass key is where the pass key is generated by the software and stored on a um, on a user's file system. So it's protected by some form of encryption um, using that user's login information. So it's it's also based on what you have, um, and the private key is is also generated and stored by software, not the hardware device. Um, the attacks are remote, so an attacker would gain access to the hardware key and they can authenticate as the user from anywhere. Uh, both are phishing resistant cryptographic keys. So we asked the Bitwarden community, you know, what, what are your thoughts around 
uh, software or hardware bound pass keys. And I think, I think the, the general consensus, and, and I've shared some of uh, people's quotes here, we have folks saying, you know, I like the idea of using software pass keys um, through Bitwarden and securing that vault using a hardware key plus password. So really adding adding extra layers of security, even if they're whatever, whatever pass key they're using, adding extra layers of security. Um, Dr. B said, I will use hardware bound pass keys for the small number of accounts that are super critical to me. Um, so thinking through, you know, what are your high value accounts and what are the extra kind of layers of security that you want to add to those specific accounts? Um, and again, uh, secure Moss server also said something similar. So again, you know, thinking through what what are you know work versus personal accounts, and what needs extra protection, and again, how to how to find that right combination of uh, pass keys plus two FA plus passwords, etc. Um, and then, of course, there are folks who are still a little bit. Um, hesitant or they they kind of want to see how past keys are going to evolve and so we have a lot of folks in the community who are excited about the possibility of eventually living in a passwordless world but um, are still tbd in terms of how um, they incorporate that into their day-to-day -day life so i'm going to hand it over to casey i think we have a, a poll here we do. So it's been running from the beginning, but I'm going to invite everyone on the call to navigate to the uh, poll pane on the right hand side of your screen because um, we just want to know what's your favorite hardware security key um, or provider. Um, looks like Yubico is um, probably the most popular. I use Yubico in solo keys personally, um, but looks like we've got a couple people using Google's um, security keys called Titan. Um, cool, we're getting a couple responses to this. And this is really. Um, this poll is just more to understand, you know, there's so many different providers of hardware keys out there um, and they all have different benefits and maybe downsides. Um, and it's just really interesting to see who's who's using them across um, their threat landscapes. Um, and their security landscapes um, and what they've decided on, especially as we are entering the age of more software bound pass keys. Um, looks like we've got one vote for solo key. That's great. Yeah, feel free to fill this out too as the um, session goes on. Maybe we'll check back later. Um, yeah, I can hand it off to you, Vivian, if you have um, something to say about these hardware security key providers. No, I think next slide is where we are going to have uh, Megan give us an update around the FIDO Alliance and um, what's happening next. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And second of all, I'm so glad I was able to get back here because I was in like purgatory for a little while with my camera there for a little while. Um, but thank you for having me. And I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what the FIDO Alliance is and kind of like where where we see pass keys fitting in the future and kind of what's next so if you don't know about the FIDO alliance we are you can um casey move to the the first slide um yeah so we are an um industry consortium so we we do three things we are a member driven um nonprofit association working on passwordless sign-ins as well as um uh, secure device uh, onboarding and device authentication in addition to user authentication. Uh, we have 250 members, and um, the, the, including Bitwarden, and our members are really the ones that drive the creation of the things that we do, which is one, create specifications for um, passwordless sign-ins um, that are open and, and free um, to use. Um, we have a certification program so that folks can um, measure their uh, tests and measure their adherence to the specs to ensure interoperability within the ecosystem of passwordless sign-ins with FIDO. And the third thing is market adoption programs, um, which is really awesome. So I'm, I'm Megan and I'm the uh, senior director of marketing for FIDO Alliance. So, but I really, um, I really say I run our market adoption programs because really what we 
are out here to do is to drive awareness and you know adoption of FIDO and pass keys um, and, and ensure that folks like Bitwarden that are supporting FIDO, you know, are um, you know, getting adoption and having their users like all of you understand, you know, what their options are for um, leveraging pass keys and signing into their um, vaults. So why are we trying to get rid of pa uh, passwords? And I think, you know, it's, it's interesting because we've talked, we talk so much and I think all everyone on this um, webinar is aware, you know, of, of the, the perils of passwords. Um, and I, but I can't say enough that we're, we're still using passwords. <laughs> So, um, you know, our, our job isn't quite done yet, right? And so it, it's always interesting to sort of see like statistics like this, um, where it's, you know, all, you know, breaches are relating to, to passwords. So anytime there's like a big breach, I, you know, I say to myself, okay, I'm 98% sure that this has something to do with a compromised credential. And I'm usually right. It's a little 2% where it's something else, but it's, it's usually a, a compromised credential. Um, and, and that's just how it's always been. But I think that, you know, what is not talked about as much as the usability issues with passwords, um, you know, folks are giving up on purchases because they can't get signed into an account. You know, folks are um, just sort of annoyed with the, with the fact that they have to manage all these passwords. And thank, thank goodness for password vaults like Bitwarden that have helped to sort of ease that. Um, because if you're doing it right and you're using a unique password for every every um, account, you have to you have to store them somewhere. You're not going to remember them. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of consumers just don't do that. They continue to use the same passwords across sites. Honestly, I, you know, it's not really their fault. It's pretty hard to to manage a unique and strong password for every site. Um, but but the 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 reason why passwords and we can move to the next slide is you know is so. Um, is, is such a problem for us is because it's, it's, it's phishing, right? I mean, we rely on ourselves and, you know, whether it's our employees or our, you know, consumers or, you know, to, you know, be vigilant and be able to recognize phishing attacks. And, 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 and that's really just not fair because phishing is only getting easier. Um, and it's it, the tools that are out there now only make phishing more effective. So you're not getting, you know, of a misspelled email from the Prince of Nigeria anymore. You're getting targeted, you know, well-written, um, whether it, through more channels. So it's not just email, it's SMS, it's whatever channel they can reach you on, WhatsApp, whatever it is, um, they will, and they will try to get your credentials. And th these are just some stats that are just saying, generative AI is not helping the matter. Um, it just is making it easier. And we have seen ourselves, we've done our own um, studies where, you know, we see a rise in just folks noticing that there's more and more they're being inundated with this. And, and look, like we don't all have time to, you know, be vigilant and try to, you know, to figure out what's fishing, what's real, if it's your bank, if it's whatever, like people are just kind of tired. And, and so we see rises in fishing, but also success with fishing. Um, and what we've done historically, if we can move to the next slide, is, you know, we are layering stuff on top of a flawed first factor, okay? So, like, we've got passwords, and then we say, okay, well, let's put stuff on top of it. Um, and, look, these things have served us well. Um, I always say if you have the option to turn on, you know, MFA, if it's an SMS text, if it's a push, whatever it is, do it if that's your only option. Um but it's not fixing the fundamental problem that we have, which is passwords. Um, and so these additional layers, you know, they're you know well intended, but they're still fishable, um, and it's only becoming easier for folks to bypass um, these MFA options. So if we move to the next slide, it's you know, so we look at a federal alliance. You know, we've we again, you know, we've had hardware security keys, you know, as part of our specifications as well as platform authenticators. You know, bound to a single device um, before we introduce synced pass keys, um, and you can build this slide out. Um, but the point is that, you know, we we t take a step back and we say we have to fix this first factor problem, or we're not ever going to get to where we want to be, which is, you know, to better secure the web, to you know, get rid of phishing. Um, and with with FIDO, FIDO is phishing resistant. Um, and the, the, the introduction of sync pass keys only helps um, for scale, 
for usability and to allow folks to access these um, their pass keys across devices. And so, like as I said earlier, you know there are you know and 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 Vivian said earlier too, you know there's there's pros and cons of uh, hardware bound security keys that house pass keys and sync pass keys. But I will tell you that a sync pass key will be better than a password every day of the week, every day of the year, 365 days a year. And I will also say it's it's also better than a password plus an OTP. Just saying, that's it's better. Um, so if we move along, I so I'm like I'm like kind of guessing what slides are coming next. So this is really fun. Um, so what if we? And you can build this. You know, what if we get rid of the problem, which is that first factor, and that's what pass keys are. Um, single phishing resistant authenticator is better than two factors, which are both easily fish. So it's phishing resistant. And um, we kind of got into this. I, I think the next slide is about, okay, let's skip this one. Cause this one I think is not, doesn't work that well. Okay, so enter pass keys. I don't think I have to get into to this as much cause we've been talking about pass keys this whole time. But really what, what we introduced with pass keys again is the ability to access your FIDO credentials across devices, you know, in being housed in some sort of a vault like Bitwarden, for example. Because um, FIDO credentials have been along, around for a very long time, as we know. A lot of you, like, have, of course, have FIDO security keys. Um, and this is just a new capability which allows access to your path, to your FIDO credentials across devices. But again, this is what we, we see as needed for broad consumer adoption. Um, not very many consumers, and I'm sure a lot of you on this call have FIDO security keys. The majority of consumers do not, and they do not want to buy one. That is just what the, what the, you know, what's just true. And then of course, so this, this is just a little matrix that shows, and I think if you click, it'll show, right. So again, strongest, most secure hardware bound security key, even easier to use, but still more secure than those things in the lower left quadrant is a, is a sync pass key. And we can, yeah, we can, we can keep going. So I just, I always, I, you know, I have, we have all these like matrices and, and builds of, of what FIDO authentication, how it works, but this is, this is the, the, this is the crux of it. This is phishing resistant. And this is what, why we talked about domains earlier. Keys are bound to the domain at, at creation. You cannot give your pass key to a spoofed or, you know, to a Fisher or a spoof site. Um, your, your authenticator will not allow you to do that. So that, so we're taking away that human factor you know, or you don't have to be vigilant anymore. You know, if you're going to Google dot, you know, and it's, a, and it's an I instead of a, an L, that's not something that you have to be concerned about anymore because uh, pass keys are inherently phishing resistant. And then I think we have some, oh, so, so again, I think Vivian said, we have some stats like 8 billion user accounts are ready to enable pass keys. That number is higher than that. It's getting higher every day. Um, all of these services plus many, many more um, now support pass keys. We are uh, going to be launching our pass key directory like tomorrow. Um, I think we have 130 entries in there. And our, our pass keys um, directory includes sites that um, accept hardware bound security keys as well as sync pass keys. Um, the, the logos that you see here, these are all sync pass keys. So I have to like the all these 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 consumer services. I mean, as soon as we introduced this, they said yes, please, because again, their users like Amazon, you know, the these broad consumer brands, like they their users are using passwords. So they're like, of course, we want to offer them sync pass keys because they're more willing to turn it on, and you know, they're going to get the phishing resistance, and it's faster. Um, much faster. So the next slide just shows, and this is what we just said, you know, these are all the, the, the accounts that can leverage pass keys today. But what is important, I think, to folks like you all that are, you know, contemplating signing in with pass keys, um, if we go to the next slide, and you can just build it, because I think there's like four, four boxes. Um, it is faster. So Mercari, it, tremendous statistics that they've shared with us, 75% sign in reduction versus signing in with a password versus password plus OTP versus pass key. We're talking about 24, you know, 20 something seconds to sign in 
and now it's like four seconds. So just just imagine like how much easier that is. You know, it's just easier. You're just able to move on with your day. You're not here like I got all these devices. I got to find my phone, whatever it is. You just sign in and it's much quicker. And, I, you know, our, our folks that are rolling this out, like they are seeing that it's successful for them. There's real business benefits for them, but it's much better for their consumers who just really just want to be able to sign in. They don't want to have to think about, you know, how, how they're authenticating necessarily. Um, and then if we move on, so awareness. So it's great that people are asking questions about pass keys. You all know what pass keys are. We're seeing more and more awareness. These are our statistics um, from our authentication barometer. It's not only uh, consumer services and consumers that are aware of pass keys, you know, want to use pass keys. IT leaders and folks, you know, for your workforces, like for, you know, um, wh wherever you work. They're also very familiar and they have password lists on their roadmaps. Really like more, I was shocked at the, the statistics that we found in terms of familiarity with this and looking at it as a way to maybe help um, their employees sign in. And then, so the year to come, um, and I'm wrapping up now, um, but what the thing I wanna focus on is this op open ecosystem. So for, uh, we call them pass keys providers or pass key vaults like Bitwarden, for example, it was really important to us. So you know, you probably know that Apple, Google, and Microsoft are on the board of directors of the FIDL um, Alliance. They have built support for pass keys into their respective operating systems. Um, they have their own methods, um, you know, within um, their ecosystems for folks to store pass keys, um, like iCloud Keychain, for example. But you know, what was real? What's really important is consumer choice. Um, and so, you know, with those folks, as well as everyone within the FIDO Alliance, you know, is working to ensure that third-party passkey providers like, like Bitwarden have open access to be able to, to allow you all to opt in to storing your passkeys there. So it's really about enabling your, your security, but your choice of where you want to store your passkeys. Um, and we're going to be working towards um, introducing some certification programs that will allow passkey providers to um, be certified um, like around the security, uh, their security of their vaults. So you'll be able to, you know, leverage these kind of certification programs just to see and help choose, you know, which vaults you want to store your passkeys in and, and I hope it's Bitwarden. I mean, I, I, but you know, it's just this is just how we want to make sure that this the ecosystem is open. This is not just tied to any operating, you know, the operating system um, or your, you know, your phone or whatever operating system that you have. Um, and so it's just enabling that ecosystem. We're going to be, you know, doing more with that next year. That's and awesome. That, Thank I you so much, Megan. That. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's really helpful, and I think um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about pass key management with Bitwarden um, later in today's session, um, and that is based on this Oaken e ecosystem that Fido Alliance has built. And so we're really grateful that we are able to leverage that kind of protocol and make um, pass keys just a little bit more accessible for the you know, not not just, um, you know, high ranking security um, leadership, but like general people like you and I. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, one of uh, Bitwarden's big things is making sure that security is accessible to everyone. Um, you know, that shouldn't be something that is um, kind of locked um, from the general public. Um, so really appreciate you coming here and like, providing a little bit more education on the topic. Um, I feel like I learned a lot. I hope people um, also on the call learned a lot as well. Yeah, Casey, we had a question from Bob in the audience. Um, and Bob mm -hmm. is asking, is the Yubico Authenticator app with YubiKey more secure compared to another TOTP method, such as the Microsoft Authenticator app on phone? Um, I don't know, is there anyone in the community, in the audience who might have an opinion on this and would like to would like to reply back to Rob, Bob? So I think the question, um, so Yubico, uh, YubiKeys can, uh, are multi-protocol. So they have FIDO authentication built into them, but they also can support TOTP. Um, so, which is, you know, uh, so I think if you're just saying like using a you, you know, using a YubiKey for TOTP versus using a different TOTP uh, method, 
Um, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same, but what's nice about leveraging TOTP on a YubiKey is that, you know, it's device bound and you can like bring it along with you wherever you go. I, I have my YubiKey, I have the micro. So like, I just leave it in there all the time and I can touch it. I think it's a little bit more usable than, than using an app. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think this really depends on like, like personal. Sorry, I talked over you a little bit, but um, no, I think this really depends on also. Kind of Sorry, go ahead. I love that. <laughs> Um, I think this depends on like also personal like um, security, um, like what what you, what you want to do for your personal security, right? So um, using a device bound um, TOTP code. TOTP on um, a YubiKey would be something that you have. And if you pair that with something that you know, like a password, that might um, be a little bit more secure because you're using those two different kinds of methods as opposed to two things that you know, like um, a TOTP on a different authenticator app. But, but I, I mean, it also just depends on um, what what your threat landscape is, what you want to do for your own personal infrastructure. Um, there's lots of different options out there for sure. Yeah, I agree. That's my opinion. <laughs> I, I also read um, a community member said something about how, you know, they, they prefer using hardware keys or a physical key because it's like they see it as like a car key. Um, and so if, if they give uh, their kids keys to the car, um, she, she, she can take it anywhere. Um, so they, they kind of, see that correlation um, with with the physical key versus the software key. Um, and so if, if keys that are physically shareable, then you may not have as much control. So again, it depends on your user experience, your threat model and different priorities. Absolutely. I mean, with that, we might move on to a little bit more about Bitwarden and passkeys and how you can start using Bitwarden or start using passkeys now with Bitwarden. Um, oh, we also got another um, answer around um, the Authenticator app with Yubico. Um, we have a community member saying it's more secure because the codes are stored on the key, not the app. Um, thank you for that response. Really appreciate community input on this topic. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to hand it off to Micah to talk a little bit more about Bitwarden and passkeys and how you can um, start using them now, essentially. Thanks, Casey. Yeah, I'll try and move through this quickly so we have time for uh, the demo. Um, here are a, a variety of ways that uh, Bitwarden is supporting passkeys. Um, one that you can go check out today uh, is just setting up uh, a passkey as your 2FA on Bitwarden. So you're Bitwarden account is protected by 2FA using passkeys, which are not fishable. Um, that's a great way to secure your Bitwarden account and check that out. Um, Bitwarden can also save and store your passkeys. Uh, you can use the browser extension to create passkeys for websites um, and uh, supply those passkeys when logging into those websites. And we are, as mentioned before, working on bringing that functionality to the mobile application so that um, those same passkeys that you have already saved can be used on your phone to uh, log into sites. Um, if you're a developer and you want to bring passkey authentication to an application that you work on, um, check out passwordless.dev from Bitwarden. This is a, a, a plug and play way of uh, implementing login with passkey on your website. Um, really cool tech happening there. And then, of course, login with Passkey. Uh, our users have been really excited about the idea of being able to log into Bitwarden with a Passkey, not just as a uh, second factor, but as your primary factor. And so Andreas is going to demo uh, a little sneak peek of what we've been working on uh, in, that, in that space. Um, as mentioned, yep, this slide, we can move on. Uh, 2FA is a, if now available for free users if you're a free user that was uh, new this year. Uh, and so I'll hand it over to Andreas to, to show us login with Passkey. Great. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so I've, um, my name's Andreas. I've been working on Passkeys here at Bitwarden for a whole year now. So I'm really excited to be able to show you the next thing that we're bringing to Bitwarden regarding Passkeys. Um, I'm going to share my screen here and hope that the demo gods are with us. And I hope that everyone can see my screen now. Thumbs up. Looks great. Nice. OK. So 
Um, basically, what I'm going to be showing here is how you can set up your Bitwarden accounts with a passkey so that you can actually log in with them instead of just using them as a two-factor authentication. Hopefully, this demo will um, sort of explain exactly what I mean by that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I have an existing account that I'm going to log into. As you see, I have a two-factor authentication here with a OTOTP code. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And I'm going to go ahead and go into my security settings. And down here, you can see this new section that we're adding called Login with Passkeys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And I'm actually going to use two methods here to show you sort of what can happen depending on which security keys you're using. First, I'm going to do is um, verify who I am. And then you can see here that Chrome is asking for a uh, uh, an authenticator to use to store this passkey. I'm going to use my YubiKey here. So I'm just going to tap that. It's going to ask me for my PIN. And then it's going to ask me to tap it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And there we go. Uh, easy, quick. Uh, I'm going to name this YubiKey. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use this for vault encryption. You'll be able to see exactly what that means later on. Um, to be able to add Vault encryption, I'm going to need to interact with my key one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there we go. The second thing I'm going to do is, just for demonstration purposes, is I'm going to add a new passkey. But this time, uh, I'm going to register it with uh, on my local device on using my Chrome profile. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to save this. It's going to ask me for my Touch ID. And now you can see that it's asking me to save this. As you can probably see, it doesn't ask me for Vault encryption. And that's because this specific authenticator doesn't yet support that. So Vault encryption is a very new feature here. And we're really bleeding edge uh, adding these things. Hopefully, we're, we're going to be able to add these uh, in more places uh, as support gets better for them. And uh, there you can see, we now have two uh, pass keys here for my account. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. And instead of using my master password this time, I'm just going to go ahead and press login with passkey. Uh, it, it says it notices that I have a passkey stored in my Chrome profile. But for this time, I'm going to use my YubiKey, which I which was the first authenticator I signed up with. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that. It's going to ask for my PIN. And then I'm just going to tap it again. As you can see, I have multiple accounts stored on this YubiKey. But for this demonstration, we're going to use the, uh, the account that I just uh, set up for this demo. And that's it. And we're logged in. And as you can see, this actually uh, both authenticates you, but it also decrypts your vault. This means that the encryption key for your vault is actually being uh, secured by your YubiKey authenticator here. So in this instance, if I have this with me, I know that at least with this key, nobody can decrypt my vault. Um, we also have some support for passkeys that don't support encryption for now. And how that looks is basically that you're going to get authenticated, but you're not going to be able to decrypt your account. So for those accounts, we're still, for the time being, still requiring a master password to be able to decrypt your account. And that was it for me, I guess. Great. Thank you, Andreas. That was really, I'm um, really informative. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this was a sneak peek. This is not yet available for um, Bitwarden, but it is coming soon to be able to both authenticate and decrypt your vault with um, a pass key. Um, so thank you for that. I'm going to um, jump back in to our main slide deck um, because there is um, some pass key um, functionality that is currently available within Bitwarden, and that's pass key management. Um, we talked about this on our last webcast, and we actually have some updates to that offering that makes it even easier to use. Um, so I'll hand it back to Micah, I believe, for um, this section as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I said earlier, we recently added the ability to store and use pass keys. 
uh, in your Bitwarden vault, starting with the browser extension. And that means that for websites that support passkey login, you can use Bitwarden to save those passkeys and log into those websites. We've been hearing lots of great feedback from the community on the feature. And I wanted to give an update on some of the things we've been working on. Uh, I think we can skip this slide. So I guess out of order, but uh, some rapid iterations we've uh, implemented already uh, are the ability to exclude certain sites. Maybe you use a hardware key on those sites and you don't want to save a passkey in Bitwarden. So now you can exclude those sites. Um, also some improvements to, this, to the flows for adding those uh, sites, um, as well as falling back to the browser experience where you don't want to use Bitwarden. So um, altogether, making the experience more smooth for cases where you don't want to use Bitwarden um, because we still want to support those use cases. Other things we're planning on working on, um, we want to implement stronger user verification so that when a site is requiring user verification, um, it's not just having an unlocked Bitwarden vault, but also we perform an additional step. So maybe that's using uh, biometrics or entering a PIN or something else so that the site can trust that you are who you say you are when you supply that private key. Um, the other thing we're working on is bringing pass keys to mobile, the mobile apps. Um, you know, we've heard users are really looking forward to being able to use pass keys on their mobile apps and we want to support that. Um, we're working on it. We have uh, a few frameworks. Uh, our, the existing framework we use for a mobile app means that we uh, can't get to it immediately, um, but it is in progress. And then uh, I'll also add that import and export is something that we are planning on supporting. Um, users want to be able to back up their pass keys. But one thing that doesn't exist today is a specification for exporting and importing pass keys. And so we are part of a working group within the FIDO Alliance creating that spec, and we will be implementing it once that spec has been defined. So those are the things that are coming up for Bitwarden and passkey management. Thank you, Micah. Um, and with that, wow, we this is perfect timing. We've got five minutes left, and I would love to open it up to a Q&A. Um, we covered a lot of topics around pass keys today, and I'm sure um, there are some other questions that people might have. If you have a question you'd like to ask live and you'd like to be eligible for a Bitwarden gift, um, please just raise your hand or put it in the chat and I'll get you upgraded to um, the screen. Uh, you can also just put your questions in the questions pane or in the chat. Um, our team will hang on for a little bit because um, uh, we, we've got a great panel of experts here that um, would love to answer some questions around pass keys. Um, so I'll give everyone a few minutes to you know finish out their thought as they're typing. Yeah, I'd like to take a second to uh, give a shout out and see if Maxim, aka Handwrite8268 in the Bitwarden community is in the audience. Um, I've been going back and forth with this person for a couple of weeks because they had posted um, something in the Bitwarden community about how they've been able to store and secure 30 pass keys in their Bitwarden vault. And I was hoping that they they would be here um, and be able to share a little bit about that experience, but maybe, maybe not. So maybe another time. Maxim, if you're here, send out send out a, a, a chat. <laughs> All right. Um, this might also be a good time while we're waiting that uh, we got some more responses on the poll. So um, we saw that most people are using Ubico for their um, hardware security keys. I think that makes sense. Um, it's probably one of the most popular providers out there um, with eight votes. We have one person using solo key and then two people using the Google Titan security keys. Um, there's a couple other keys we have listed here that no one is using on this call apparently, um, which is kind of interesting, but you can always go down and look at the other ones um, if you click on the poll um, on the right hand side of your screen. Um, we also got a question from Matthew. Yeah, I was just gonna answer that question. Matthew, it, it is already possible to share pass keys uh, with your spouse. Um, so using Bitwarden organizations, you can create a shared collection and put the items that have those pass keys in that shared collection. And then both of you can access the pass key from your Bitwarden account and use that pass key to log into say a banking website. Um, so already possible today. 
Yeah, thank you, Micah. You read my mind. Well, any other questions from the participants? Looks like the poll, it's up to nine votes for Ubico. That seems like the overwhelming favorite uh, for this uh, group today. But I, I do want to say thank you to everyone who joined today. Um, Andreas, for your live demo. Micah, giving a little bit more context around um, the future of the product. I really appreciate that. Um, I feel like I learned a lot, and I hope everyone else on the call learned a lot too. Um, there's a lot that is going on in terms of pass keys um, when you're thinking of the broader scope or you know specific implementations of it with Bitwarden. Um, I find that very interesting. Yeah, this will be our last Bitwarden uh, webcast for the year, um, uh, year, the year 2023. So if there are other topics, we're, we're going to be doing a lot more next year in 2024. So if there are specific topics around past keys or anything else, please reach out to us through social media, through the community forums, um, and and share your thoughts with us. And we're, we're, we're excited to... Meet you all back here again um, in the new year. So happy holidays, everyone. Thanks, Vivian. Um, well, it looks like we're not getting any more questions, but feel free to reach out to us on the community forums, on social media, um, all of that stuff. Uh, we, we love hearing from you. Um, but I think I'm going to end today's session. Um, thank you again, everyone, for joining. This was great. Good end to the year.